a little extra protein. One month after his kidney transplant, Andy Bratton can't take any chances with his breakfast. There's a long list of foods that could hurt his recovery. The fear is bacteria because um, my part of my immune system is, is so low and they're suppressing part of it to make sure that the liver doesn't get rejected. Oh. 915. 915. Pills alarm. That's my pills alarm. Take meds. 915. He has to keep a strict schedule. And there's the secondary pill alarm. In case the first one doesn't go. Take pills. With flashing lights and everything. Um let's try not to drop it all. He has to keep a strict schedule. So this is my my calcium. This is my CELSEP, which is an anti-rejection meds. If that wasn't hard enough to swallow, after the pills comes the bills. There's a seemingly endless stream of them. And even with decent insurance, he and his husband, Matthew, have found themselves in a hole. So they paid 10000 of the 13000 in the days after his surgery, with the reality of how expensive it is to get sick in America setting in, Andy's friends convinced the couple to turn to the crowd for help. They created a GoFundMe page. They put Andy's story online and spread the word to family and friends. Their initial goal was $10,000. We kind of live pretty open about everything, but it's hard to admit that you need help. It's hard to admit that you can't do everything. He's not the only one who's felt they had nowhere else to go. The last few years has seen an explosion of campaigns to crowdfund medical expenses. Everything from major surgeries to experimental drugs to everyday medications. The majority end up on GoFundMe, which touts itself as a digital safety net. The site says more than a third of the money raised in 2017 went to medical campaigns. But because users don't always file healthcare campaigns in the medical category, they admit that number is probably higher. In fact, a 2016 study found that $930 million of the $2 billion GoFundMe had raised since 2010 went to medical campaigns. The CEO of GoFundMe told CBC, I think in a perfect world, GoFundMe wouldn't be necessary. But in the imperfect world in which we live, you have to have something. He said the growth in medical crowdfunding is a symptom of a sick system one where 47% of Americans said they couldn't find $400 for an emergency. These are um, potential campaigns that are meant to give you hope. But is crowdfunding a suitable crutch for a hobbled system? Lauren Berliner with the University of Washington Bothell has been studying medical campaigns. This is something we see as a canary in a coal mine. She says in U.S. states where the government didn't expand Medicare, they found an increase in people looking for online donations. I don't think the general public is really thinking about how medical crowdfunding is signaling more of a problem than it is a solution. They also found that it's a system where those in the most need don't always get the most help. Winning campaigns are those that can market their illness the best or are lucky enough to go viral. There are thousands and thousands of campaigns at this point, and so many compelling, tragic stories that it is overwhelming. Photos of a healthy subject, a good hashtag, those all help. So too does having a curable illness. To put it in a really crude way, so that the, the possible donors feel like they're getting a return on their investment. I don't know if you've seen the filtering. In the Vancouver office of crowdfunding site Fundraiser, CEO Daryl Hatton sees that drama unfold on a daily basis. He says the majority of the medical campaigns on his site are American. Canadians are there too, but mostly for things not covered by government health care. He says the few campaigns that are lucky enough to go viral skew expectations for everyone else. Only if your story is really compelling and is, gets some media coverage does it go much beyond friends or friends of them out into a broader marketplace. So it's really unrealistic to expect that high level of funding to happen. Berliner found 90% of the cases they studied didn't reach their goal, and about 10% raised less than $100. Hatton says the current growth of medical crowdfunding can't be sustained. Eventually, donor fatigue will set in. There's only so much we can support 
friends and family with kind of crowd insurance around our health care. Uh, really, there's, there's got to be more systemic ways to deal with that. $16,445 as of today. Andy and Matt are among the lucky ones. They reached their $10,000 goal thanks to a strong network of family and friends and connections in New York's theater scene. Matt's company also promised to match any donations made by his co-workers. They've now raised their goal to $30,000. The outpouring has been amazing. How does it make you feel? Really loved and really appreciated and thankful. And just as important as the money, he says the words and thoughts shared through the site have given him strength, something he thinks more and more Americans will need to turn to in the years ahead. Stephen D'Souza, CBC News, New York.